Welcome to part three of McCall's M7985 Sew Along. Here's what we will be covering in today's video. Assembly of the stand collar. If you need help with that skill or just need a refresher, click the link at the top of your screen. Attachment of the stand collar. If you need help with that skill or just need a refresher, click the link at the top of the screen. Lastly, if you're new to sewing or just need a refresher, check out my free Sewing Basics video series by clicking the link at the top of your screen. If you already know how to do my sew alongs and videos, and if you'll be kind enough to watch at least one ad should it appear, which enables me to keep bringing you free content, feel free to skip ahead and go straight to the sew along. Skip ahead to the 3 minute 55 second mark. Here's a little bit about how I do my Sew With Me Sew Alongs. Our techniques, I'm going to put it on the website and I will reference it in the Sew Along itself. So for example, we just did, we're working on a pair of pants that has a fly front. So when we get to that portion in the Sew Along, I'll do a little bit of it, you know, and in instructions in the sew along itself, but then I'm going to refer you over to the website to go ahead and look at that video, that particular video, look it over, you know, um, study it, do your own sample if you want, because you know, I'm big on that technique binder. So go ahead and, you know, and do that. And then once you get a good hang of um, what that technique is, then come back onto the, the sew along itself and do that particular technique with the sew along. So that way, we both kind of benefit. Um, you still get the instruction of the actual sew along, step by step of how to do a particular thing. Um, but I, it's less editing on my part because, uh, like I said, I'll mention it in the sew along itself, but then I'll refer you over to the website to actually find that particular technique um, and go ahead, review it, look at it. Um, and then once you master it or enough to wear even so long, you know, at the same time and, and install it in that particular so long that you're that you're doing at that time. Um, so hopefully that will be OK for for you, because I think it's a I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone for watching my videos. Um, I love to upload the videos. I love to share my knowledge. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you guys love to get free content. So in order for me to keep uploading uh, free content, I just need you to do some simple things for me, some very simple things. The first thing is just to hit the subscribe button. So just make sure that you hit that um, so you're subscribed to my channel. Hit the notification bell so when I upload a new video, you don't miss out and you get to see it. And then also if, if there's an ad um, on my videos, they're typically anywhere from 10 seconds to maybe up to two minutes. Um, just go ahead and either watch it or do something else you want to do in those uh, in those um, in that particular time that that ad is running. So use the restroom, go get something to drink or something like that. Because that way, if you let that ad run, um, I benefit from YouTube, and that way I can still keep creating content and uploading it for free. Okay, 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 enough of that boring stuff. Back to the sew along. Please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, click the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Thanks again and keep on watching. This is uh, part three. Uh, so we're moving on to step number 14. In our instructions, so we'll be doing 14, 15, 16, and it looks like 23 and 24. Um, 15, 14, I should say. Um, you would need pattern piece number four, which is uh, your neck band. So it says for facing turn and seam allowance on single notched edge of interface neck band number four. Press easy and fullness, trim, press seam allowances to three eighths. Okay, so I do mine a little different. I do mine on the non interface portion because that is considered the facing. Okay, 
um, and the facing typically goes on the inside. So that's the reason why I do uh, my fold up on the facing portion. You can follow the directions if you like, but the way I'm gonna do mine. And in order to help me uh, fold it up because it is on a slight curve here, I always do like a guideline um, based in it at just shy of whatever that seam allowance is. So if the seam allowance is five eighths, do it just shy. I happen to like a longer facing, so I do mine at a half an inch. So I'm doing mine just shy of a half an inch, okay? So at this point, you should have your urn, and what you would do is, uh, let me see if you can see the stitching there, and you're going to turn it so it's wrong side facing up, just easier for me, and then you're just going to um, fold up so you can see your basting stitch. So that way, when you look on the right side, you won't be able to see your basting stitch, okay? So fold up just past your basting stitch. Just past your basting stitch like that, okay? And you can pin it in place um, if you like, or just go ahead and press it, press it up. Um, and if you like, like they say, trim it down by half. Honestly, I don't. Um, I kind of like that extra sturdiness. Unless it's a real thick fabric, I would do that. But, you know, on your regular weights, light weights, I typically don't um, trim it down because I do like that extra weight. But go ahead and um, fold up that, um, you know, that seam allowance on either one that you want to do, whether it's on your your facing side or on or interface side or your non-interface side, which one you're gonna do. Like again, I say I do mine on the non-interfaced one because this is technically your facing, uh, neckband facing. So just basically go like that and you're gonna iron that. Um, and when you do that, come back. All right, so you're gonna get your interfaced portion and this is doing it my way. All right, and with right sides together, you're gonna to match up the notches, putting your facing um, piece that has the, um, you know, the pressed up seam allowance on top and you're just going to match the notches at the top, okay? And once you match those notches, okay, so say we match those notches up here. Um, what you're going to do, let's bring it over here. What you're going to do is on starting at one end, so some people say sew just from the folded up edge. It really doesn't matter. I sew from the very beginning to make sure that I'll catch that folded up edge. So sew from the bottom all the way up using extra seam allowance, okay? All the way up um, and along the top and all the way back down, making sure that your folded edge is folded up, okay? Pressed up um, when you go back down, okay? Um, and then from that point, you want to trim your seam allowance, trim that down by half and uh, trim your corners there. I also want to mention that if you find it easier um, on this corner, you can actually use your marking tool and draw a line at your seam allowance that you're using. Um, that way you know exactly where to stop, you know, and make your pivot. Um, and I will be doing that as well. Okay, and as you can see, here's my guideline that I made with my marking tool. I used a finer chalk um, pen there. 
that's how I know I'll be sewing up here. When I get here, I'll pivot at this intersection. All right. As you can see, sewed up here once I, I backstitch at the fold um, and use my guide in order to turn. Okay, so now we're going to trim this down by half. Then you're going to trim your corners here. Remember, you're just making triangles and not clipping into not clipping hold on there we go getting close to that pivot point but not cutting those threads <clears throat> press this press it uh, and if you can press it open that may be a little hard to do um, but to press it open you just open it up like that and try to get in there and open it up like that Okay, so once you press this, it should look something like this. Okay. Pressed up. The facing, the way I do it, the facing is pressed up. All right. All right, now you're going to need your bodice here. And you want it so that it is right side facing up and looking at the back okay we're going to put it where the interface of mine the interface the one that's not flipped up seam allowance flipped up is right sides together you're going to match up your notches first so match up the back uh, notch first and you want to keep the folded edge out the way okay you won't be pinning that at all pinning or sewing that up at all okay and you should have some dots that corresponds to shoulder get my words right <laughs> uh, to your shoulder here all right and because this is a curve we will probably be clipping, but we won't clip yet because we need to see where our notches are before we clip, okay? So go, so that's here. Matching up the shoulders. Remember to keep that one out the way. Do it, so at here, now, what I typically do is extend the band just a tad bit past the um, the neck band, just past the front band, not to uh, confuse you, just a tad, like maybe one sixteenth of an inch, like not even a lot. And that helps with the turn of the cloth once you turn it over to the right side. Um, so sometimes it don't stay there, <laughs> but I pin it there and hopefully sew it there at that intersection. Okay. Now you want to go back. Oops. Alrighty. Now, um, you may have to, oops, gonna do the other side here. Now you may have to trim to 
to make it fit. All right, um, as you can see, there is some gapping in between the bodice and the neck band. So you can make small clips, your bodice piece, okay? So you make small, small little snips. And all that does is releases the fabric to let it it's expand. Okay. So that it's flush. All right, and once you get it, go ahead and pin. See how that expands? It opens, makes an open like the V. So before it was closed, but as you need to to match the band, it expands. See how it opens to that V? So that it can match. All right, so now what you want to do is ISO with this part up, with the interface uh, portion up. And as I sew, um, I'm filling right where I'm sewing at to make sure that that part is flat. So I may have to adjust the fabric underneath as I'm sewing to make sure that this where I'm sewing at will be flat okay you may have to adjust it either way as you sew here this uh the band part you may have to move that out the way to get started uh, but so from here let's go this way so from here all the way across to the other end keeping your pressed up seam allowance facing portion out the way okay and um, once you sew that look at it make sure that there's no um pleats or anything like that if it's too pronounced of a pleat you know you can just unstitch that portion and and re-sew it um you may have to clip a little bit more you know in order to release that fabric so it, it'll spread out to be that be um and then when you like it go ahead and trim that seam allowance down by half um and then come back you look on the outside you see that there is no puckers no pleats um or anything like that very nice and then extending it extending the um, band the collar band um beyond the front band by like a smidget um so when you fold that under and in two it creates a nice um flush view like that okay so from this point do like your directions say number 24 which is slip stitch it um and most definitely you can slip stitch it but first thing you want to do is that seam allowance for the that we just did you want to press that up toward um the band so inside the band okay because we're going to take the seam allowance the folded edge the facing and we're going to basically cover that seam allowance so i'm looking at the wrong side of my garment and folding it past that stitch line as so like that and like they said you can either slip stitch it hand sew it okay um another method is to do that pin and you may want to pin on the right side pin here and you can stitch in the ditch okay or my typical method what i typically do is pin on the right side again but do an edge stitch 
um, on the collar itself about one eighth um, of an inch away um, from the seam line. Um, and that's what I'll be doing, okay? This is how I do my pinning, even though I was sew and eventually pinned on this side, I do it from the inside first. Um, and I'll just go around and whatever, start at the back. And then I usually put a pin in the back and then I'll put the pin at the center fronts. Okay, um, making sure that those are flat. Um, and then I'll just go, like if I'm working here, I'll just make sure that right here is nice and flat. And then I'll put a pin. Move over to the next section. Make sure that this area, nice and flat, put a pin. And so that's the way I do that. And so now, because remember, I'll be sewing from this side. Um, all I'm doing is putting pins right in that seam line as if I will be stitching in a ditch, which I won't, <laughs> but like I'll be stitching in a ditch, I'll put it in that. And if you look on the other side, it catches, let me take it out so you can see All right, right here, you see that it catches that pin that's sticking out is the pin from the front. And you see that it catches that fold, okay? And I'll just go around maybe every inch, you know, making sure that it catches the fold on the other side. See that stick pin right there? Make sure that, that catches the fold. Catches that fold. It's right here. All right. So you get the picture. So I'll go all the way around. And then once I finish pinning all the way around, I'll take my original pins on the wrong side out. So I would take like that one out. And so all that's left is the ones that's in the front. And as I sew again, remember I'll be sewing, me personally, we'll be sewing an eighth of an inch away from the seam line. So I'll be edge stitching, okay? So I'm um, back from the sewing machine and I told you I did my one eighth of an inch away um, from the seam line and it's an edge stitch, but it's also a top stitch. Um, so I do my top stitch at a 3.0 uh, stitch length. So that's the reason why it's a little bit more prominent um, because it's a longer stitch length. Um, as you can see, doing that. Okay, and this is the inside. Call it that edge all the way around. And these little blue marks, that's my marking pen. It'll come off with water or when you first wash it, wash your garment. So that is the neckband. So once you finish that, go ahead and give it a nice final press. And we'll be finished with the neckband. Let me know what you think of this pattern in the comments below. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Thanks again for watching and happy sewing.